rather than talk specifically about building information modeling very specifically, really start talking about a different way of thinking about uh, information integration in the building sector. And if you went to some of the sessions uh, over the last few days, I'm sure you've heard a lot about data mm. and how it's going to be integrated with resilience, with sustainability, with uh, information communications technology affecting all of construction. And so the question uh, before us is, for the construction and building sector, what are the implications of the revolution that is taking place in every other sector of the economy? Um, oftentimes, the construction sector is uh, the last to follow. And can we jumpstart and leapfrog uh, what we're doing to actually get into the 21st century? Um, the economic potential of data is huge to the economy, globally. There was a report that came out from McKinsey just a few years ago which talked about a $3 trillion value add to the global economy uh, due uh, to data being released uh, in seven different sectors of the economy, including the government being one of the sectors. There have been numerous private sector studies which have talked about the benefits of the Internet of Things uh, and the Industrial Internet, which talk about a value add in the next decade of 10 to 15 trillion dollars. Huge amounts of value add. And if you just think about the disruption that the world economy is going through, and I suspect many people in this room, there are, there are the benefits and there are, of course, the other aspects of this uh, uh, IT uh, disruption that are affecting um, the, the job market, um, that are, you know, are we going to have job growth or is it only economic growth? Uh, the challenges of what you do when you do have this kind of disruption, how do you manage with the uh, dislocation in the employment base? There are a number of questions, but if we get stuck without getting the full economic growth, the larger pie enables you to create more jobs, uh, is going to be a challenge. So, uh, everybody's talked about the industrial revolution, we all know this historical stuff. We know the cyber revolution, uh, the internet revolution, we've all gone through that. But what we're going through now is the next revolution, and that's often sometimes called the industrial internet revolution, where we are combining cyber systems and physical systems and mashing these up into cyber physical systems. And yesterday you heard uh, why not we also have social systems being linked in but in some ways, we have actually tried to capture that here in this presentation uh, within the cyber physical systems framework. A number of drivers, technological drivers, as well as socioeconomic, geopolitical, and demographic amplifiers. You know, we've heard about the changing nature of work. Um, we've heard about urbanization. Uh, we've heard about aging societies. Um, and, and the emerging middle class in, in many parts of the world. So what are cyber physical systems? They're really convergence of technologies. You know, it, this applies to construction as much as it does to any other sector, whether it's manufacturing uh, or any other sector. Machines, facilities, infrastructure, fleets, and people. Uh, our physical systems. Um, sensing, communications, information, data, monitoring, wireless analysis are all cyber systems. And so when you combine the two, what is made possible is a life cycle performance optimization or improvement. Huge amounts. 
whether it's through efficiency and sustainability, where we talk in terms of smart buildings, for example, building control systems, agility and flexibility that we could get in production systems, off-site manufacturing, reliability and resilience that Krishna talked about, um, or safety and security. And they're kind of um, combined, safe, Oftentimes, when we talk about hazards, we talk about safety, when we talk about um, issues related to security, we're talking about strengthening buildings against um, uh, intentional uh, destructive acts. So what are these cyber-physical systems? I'm sure you've heard about these different words at different times. Some people call them smart systems, some IBM calls it Smarter Planet, uh, Siemens call it Sustainable Cities, uh, and so there are a number, GE calls it the Industrial Internet, there's actually an Industrial Internet Consortium with 50 to 100 companies, major US companies and global companies that was formed in the last couple of years, uh, machine to machine. All of these really have very, very common structures underneath them. And they are um, being applied in different sectors. They are being applied in the building and structures area. They are being applied in the infrastructure area. If I use the word smart grid, you will suddenly say, yeah, I know that. I heard there was a presentation about the smart grid um, uh, at this conference. Uh, but it's not only smart grid in terms of power. It can be a smart grid in terms of water. Oil and gas, it can be a smart, any kind of grid could be made smart if we have the right set of sensors uh, and networks. And transportation certainly is an area where this is hugely affecting uh, our manufacturing industry. Autonomous vehicles um, is a huge area of interest where the gap between the manufacturing sector, the automotive sector, for example, and the information technology sector, the Googles and the Microsofts, are disappearing. Uh, software companies are becoming hardware companies, uh, and hardware companies are becoming software companies. In fact, uh, Jeff Immel, the CEO of General Electric, said that they're 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 going. Industrial companies are going to become software companies over the years. The value add of a car today is more than 50% is software and electronics. Right? Is the value add of a building more than 50% software and electronics? If not, the potential is huge. Um, and I don't mean just the, the, build, the, 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 uh, the portion of the building life cycle that deals with the planning, design, uh, and uh, construction, but I'm also talking about the operation, maintenance, repair, renewal, the rest of the life cycle, the full life cycle, right? And in fact, think about it. You, if the product that we're selling the construction sector, which is building the facilities and infrastructure, if they are made more smart, the demand for them likely would be a differentiator. Um, you know, just like you buy certain cars because it has certain functionality. Um, we are so used to assuming houses can only do certain things or buildings can only do certain things, we don't wait for the disruptive changes to build it. In fact, there are some fascinating buildings being built around the world. And we went to, uh, to Tokyo as part of the CIB board meeting. We went to Shimizu's new building. And we saw um, some of the new ideas being implemented there, which integrates this whole idea of smart systems and cyber-physical systems with the building information modeling. So I think we just have to scale this up and, uh, and expand. So what are the crucial disciplines that are going to help us here? Uh, and, and this is really, you've, you've heard this uh, today uh, in the last couple of days about data science. 
And I want to just expand that to include engineering. It's not only about science, it's about engineering. Uh, and it's, there are a number of things that data science and engineering will enable us to do in terms of discoverability and usability of the data, there's a whole expert area in that, area, in that field. Interoperability and standards uh, are, are hugely challenging in terms of reference architectures, metadata, APIs, developer platforms. Think about it. Every one of you is actually carrying the equivalent of a BIM on this device that you're carrying. You just don't know it. Right? These guys then go through this very comprehensive, convoluted process to develop this platform. The way we go through in the construction world. This is a platform in which there are hundreds of thousands of apps. They all talk to each other. They all use the common operating system. The operating system on which there are APIs, application programming interfaces, enable all the apps to interface with the platform. Think about it. Why can't we do this in construction? Right? So it's that kind of thinking we really need to bring it into play. And of course, none of that is going to happen without a broadband infrastructure uh, which allows us to, uh, you know, uh, to support. It, the, the broadband infrastructure is going to be the power grid of the future. To get the $15 trillion of global GDP growth in the next 10 years, we're going to have a broadband infrastructure. I don't mean only wires, it's wireless, all of the above, satellites, all of the above. We're going to have to build that, and we are building that, and it needs to be global, allowing free flow of information across borders to be really, really uh, effective. Because companies are no longer national companies, they're all international global operations. And so if the construction sector is going to be competitive, much like many of the other sectors, we have to figure this out. And yes, we all know the constraints that we have to think through. Cybersecurity, privacy, we know that. But, uh, um, but given those challenges, those are just challenges like they've always had challenges in every, every um, uh, generation when you've had new technologies. So those are just part of the business of, of innovation. So, in summary, the data economy is global. There will be another two to three and a half billion people will be connected by 2025 on the internet. We have about two to three billion, two billion people roughly now, uh, two and a half. Asia will be 34% uh, of total mobile traffic is a projection in 2020. Europe 22%, America 21%. Different flavors going to be very different. And so in terms of the opportunity or impact on construction building, we really have the ability to make a big change, but it's going to require uh, forward thinking, uh, the ability to actually uh, think beyond our, our, the boxes that we're used to thinking about, uh, because I think the benefits can be huge if you do this right. Um, again, doing it right is very important. Uh, but I know there are really leading innovative thinkers, researchers uh, within CIB and within the construction sector who can make all this possible. So with that, uh, I'll just conclude. I did not talk about BIM, but I think um, you know maybe this has a lesson for us in terms of what BIM could be. Thanks.